that there's a difference between a mission and a quest. I think in you know other revolutions there may have been a mission. We want this sort of change and we want to see this. So oftentimes we're asked to you know describe what it's going to look like. But we're on a quest. What does it look like if we bring the best of who we are to this task of transforming our world? What will that look like? Only we can figure that out together. Not any group of us, not any one occupation. I think as you know, this ripple effect continues and more and more and more people and countries are brought into this conversation, I see it as potentially epic, the level of change that could be at the end of this domino series tipping. And I think it's interesting, I just want to throw in that, you know, people, like you look at the Arab Spring, you look at Egypt, there was a movement that basically had no clearly articulated agenda, basically wanted to get the people active. One clear agenda was Mubarak's got to go. Mm -hmm. Well, Mubarak went, and uh, military took over. Not wasn't long before the people realized, hey, wait a minute, that alone was not enough. Um, so, I mean, for everybody who's saying, oh, you need to have this one clear agenda, and that's a, no, movements go far beyond one agenda. It shouldn't be reduced down to one agenda. That's an easy way to screw them up if they only have one thing. Um, we do have, uh, for, for some first of theater, there are things we need to do in terms of shutting down our show, this being our final performance, we actually have to uh, start changing over for our next productions that are, that are lined up here. Like I said, everything we do here at Subversive Theater is trying to speak to these social issues and trying to fuel what, I mean, not that I think a performance of a play is going to change the world. Uh, Bertolt Brecht, the revolutionary playwright, he once said, um, Theater can't change the world, but theater can change people. People can change the world, which is something I'd like to believe subversive theater is a small, doing in a small way. So everything we do here is trying to take on these issues. Our next play, starting January 26th, is Play Raising in the Sun. If you're not familiar with it, it's, it's very much about the fight against uh, discrimination in housing and uh, racism and uh, finding the dignity to stand up against that. So we really hope you'll come back and be a part of that. And I'd love to set up more of these kind of nights with us. Yeah! Yes. Yes. If we wanted to do like a benefit event here or some sort of party or whatever, we'd love to do that kind of thing. Brian, is there something you wanted to add? I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm listening to everything and, and you know, obviously I'm, I'm not a part of the movement and I'm skeptical about, I'm sorry to be this guy, you know, but, but I, I'm skeptical because for me, the way that I feel is like, I've looked at all of you now, right? And I'm a person who I consider myself a giving and loving person. And if you were in need here, I would help you because I can see you. But I feel like we're in this world with so many people that we don't see and we don't think of them the way that we do our brothers and our sisters and the people that live next door and the people we see every day. And so I don't know the answer to how you get to that place. I feel like all societies would work really well if there were 20 people, you know, or, or 40 people. You know? Because you know people and you care and you would give the shirt off your back for your daughter, for your neighbor. You know, when it snows, everybody in Buffalo comes out, they dig out the cars, we take care of each other. Oh my but God. it's like, but it's like, you don't, if you don't see the pictures of the starving people, you don't see the pictures of the people in need, you don't know them, you don't talk to them, out of sight, out of mind. I don't know, I, I, I just have a hard time there. Oh, so <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I wanted to talk about that, the change on the, oh, on the, on the laws. And it's kind of the same with the Occupy is doing. We're trying to make the government listen to us. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to, and they, it's it's on them because they're the one in control, so they can change it to according to how they want it. You know what I'm saying? And it's not right. It's like once you once you make that law, shouldn't it stay that way? Shouldn't it? I mean, the Bill of Rights and all this stuff that they that they make up, they say what's going on. The president and all these politicians, you're telling us how to live. You're telling us what we can and cannot do where we can and cannot go, but yet you want us to work for you and you want us to be nice to you and you treat us like crap, like, like the workhorse. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you, you, it's okay.
okay because you're in control to change whatever you want to change because you're in control because you're 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 the leader. What about us though? Are, aren't we aren't we your workers? Aren't you supposed to be you know helping us out too? Like. And are we supposed to get something out of this, or are we just your slaves? Let me get our stage manager, Jesse, a chance to come in on this. Jesse's been the one uh, keeping the show running all this time, by the way. Yeah, I agree with you. And our, our nation was actually founded on those ideals. We were supposed to choose a person to represent us and to help us, and it, it just wasn't happening. Yeah. And I had a question for all of you. Um, I am fortunate enough to be employed. But if I was not, I would be with you. I would be downtown. I would be occupying. Mm -hmm. And I'm just wondering, since I can't, what can I do to help the movement? Talk about it. Talk about it. Um, I'd like to directly this song, but you just said yeah. <laughs> um, And like when you said earlier about the identifying as not part of the movement, I think um, we are very used to a paradigm that operates on representational government, centralization of power. Um, so we see, oh, there are these people in Niagara Square that are wearing these hoodies that are sleeping and doing this thing. There's, there's a, a space and an identity. Um, and, and to participate in that space means you are part of the movement. Um, I personally, I know many other are ready to move away from that um, mentality in, in, in recognizing the ways in which you in your life what you were doing right here. You said you're a third grade teacher. I'm a teacher as well. Um, the relationships that you do have with your neighbors, with your family, with the people you love, with the people that you have close personal relationships, um, how do you take maybe the values that you identify with, the goals, the quest, the missions that you identify with, and infuse your life, embody that, and um, transform yourself and transform those relationships around you? This is not um, you know, a party. This is not a uh, boardroom. Um, this is not a large committee. It, it does not. The 99% can't all fit in Niagara Square, and there's no need for them to do so. It's an extremely diverse community with diverse agendas, um, needs, and goals. And I think it's it's about seeking your own autonomy in your life and bettering yourself and your community in the ways in which you are gifted um, and empowering people around you to do so as well. And that sounds kind of idealistic. But. Until the 99% can identify with the 99%, they're not going to take you seriously. You know, I mean, like, like, until you have those masses, you know, until you have the people, like right now, they, they see you as people in a square. You know, and so there's no... Well, that, that transformation of seeing yourself as someone in the square, of looking in the mirror, does not happen instantly. You know? All of us are very different people than we were the year before, the year before, the year before. Um, so obviously you guys are very, you know, well educated to understand the principles that this country was founded on, but the facts that, you know, it was founded and built on slave labor from a number of different countries show that they kind of, um, the bullish disconnect between what actually happens and what actually happens and what you see. So in a certain way, you guys are kind of being like the worker, well, you know what, the pigs are always right, um, because there's no set outcome for what else is out there. So in seeing everybody as people in a square and not seeing yourself as being part of a global revolution, um, then that I would ask you the question, because you understand the character well, how do you break that loyalty um, from the state? I think the answer that I can give you is that, like the character, I'm terrified. You know, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, honestly, I got two kids. You know, I I got a wife. I I'm I, I, I don't want I don't want to I don't want to fuck up anything that I you know like I'm taking care of people. I have people that depend on me. And the thing is, is like that's what I was referring to earlier. I see those people. There's people that should be depending on me that I don't see, but I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how to okay. make that shift. This time, the way for a long time. Can I get a friend over here? Okay. My name is Yuri, by the way. Hi, Yuri. Sorry, I'm sad to learn everybody's name. Yes. Okay. 